What's up guys, Chigs there from Chigs Tech Reviews. So today I bring you a comparison video between two powerful mini PCs. We have the Geekom Mini IT 11 versus the Intel Nook 11. Price wise, the Geekom is priced around 500 US dollars and the Intel is priced just over 800 US dollars. So massive difference in price. Intel is more expensive, but does that make it better than the Geekom? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. All right. So first of all, physical differences. Build quality wise, they do feel quite similar. So the Geekom has a plastic top and then you've got metal going all the way around and metal at the bottom. The Intel Nook 11 has a similar build quality, plastic on top, metal on the sides, and the bottom plate is made from metal. Size wise, they look very similar. You can see the Geekom has the logos and it's finished in this gunmetal silver. The Intel Nook 11 has no branding and you've got a matte finish. On the front, if we compare the ports, we've got USB 4, USB 3. We've got a headphone and microphone combo jack and a physical power button. Now exactly the same layout in the Intel box, but over here we have Thunderbolt 3 versus USB 4. If we just flip them around, you can see Kensington lock in exactly the same place. Flip it around again on the back. Again, exactly the same layout. We've got physical power sockets, um, mini display ports, We've got gigabit LANs in both. Both have two USB 3 ports and you've got your HDMI ports. Over here, you've got another USB 4 port, and on this side, we have Thunderbolt 3. If we keep going, full-size SD card slot on the side, and that brings us back to the front. Um, quickly compare the bottom of the box. So connectivity-wise, exactly same layout. The only difference I can see here is USB 4 versus Thunderbolt 3. Now, I do want to compare the accessories, what you get in each box. So let's just lay them out and compare. So both come with their paperwork, the user manuals. They both come with a very similar mounting bracket. So you can mount this to the back of your monitor and you do get a bag of screws in both boxes um, for the mounting brackets. It comes with a carry bag as well. So these mini PCs are quite portable. You can carry them around with you. Um, so this one comes with the advantage of a bag. Now the power supplies you can see are totally different. You've got a big laptop style power supply in the Intel Nook. But the Geekom's power supply is more compact in size. So that's interesting as well. Um, power cable, more or less the same in both. Um, additional extra, you get an HDMI cable in the Geekom and you don't with the Intel. So that is all the accessories that you get in both. So design wise, they're very similar, but what about specifications? Well, let's compare them side by side. Both are powered by Intel Core i7 processors. The Geekom has the 1195G7, which is clocked at 2.9 gigahertz. The Intel has the 1165G7, clocked at a similar 2.8 gigahertz. And you also have the same integrated Intel Iris XE graphics. So I guess power and performance are going to be on par with each other. Geekom has a slightly higher clock speed, but it should not translate to any noticeable performance boost. But to put this to the test, I did run some benchmarks and I'll put them on the screen right now for you to compare. Now, if we compare the Geekbench results, you can see the Geekom has scored slightly higher in single core and multi-core, but not high enough to actually see a noticeable difference. We have a similar story in Antutu benchmark test. Geekom achieves a slightly higher 567K versus 559K. And you can see both failed the graphics test and Antutu skipped them both, scoring them zero for the GPU test. And I also compared the CPU passmark benchmark score and again 11K versus 10.4K. So really close in every benchmark. And if you're wondering how these two mini PCs rank in my top performing mini PC chart of 2023, you will find them at position 11 and position 12 on this chart. So that should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect in terms of performance from these two mini PCs. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. Furthermore, we have exactly the same RAM and storage in both units. So 16 gigs of DDR4 dual channel RAM and both can be upgraded to a maximum of 64 gigs of RAM. Storage is also the same 512 gigs M.2 SSD in both and they are both expandable to two terabytes. 
Both also have the option for you to expand the storage by adding a two and a half inch SATA drive. To access the internals, you need to open four screws on both exactly the same so far. So now if we check out the internals, you can see we have exactly the same layout. You can see both have their SATA expansion slots on the front. So you can add a SATA hard drive up to two terabytes. So we have exactly the same branded RAM. So it's crucial RAM. Each slot has eight gigs of RAM to give you a total of 16 gigs. And they are both dual channel DDR4 RAM. Now the storage is also the same. We've got Lexar 620, 512 gigabyte storage in both. That's M.2 NVMe. You can swap that out for a two terabyte if you like. But it's interesting how you have exactly the same branded RAM and storage in both of these mini PCs. Now coming back to the specifications, both mini PCs feature Wi-Fi 6, gigabit LAN and Bluetooth 5.2. We have Windows 11 pre-installed and activated, ready to use on both systems. Both mini PCs also feature a cooling fan built in to keep things running cool. So you can expect an equally powerful performance on both mini PCs. And I did play some AAA games like GTA 5. And here is a comparison of the performance. So playing GTA 5, both resolutions set to 1080p with graphics set to very high. We are achieving very similar frame rates, average of around 56 frames per second on both systems. The TDP does go up to 35 watts in the Intel system and the Geekom has the TDP at around 27 watts. And next I hooked up my retro station hard drive via USB and connected my wireless USB controller to test out some PS3 performance. So starting off with the Geekom. So playing Tekken 6 at 60 FPS, no sweat. This game plays nice and smooth on the Geekom system. And the same game on the Intel Nook 11, Tekken 6 playing super smooth at 60 FPS. Tekken 6 is quite an easy to emulate game, so it does play well on both systems. Skate 3 is more of a challenge and you do need a pretty powerful PC to emulate this game. The Geekom manages 16 FPS with the TDP going up to around 28 watts. So quite unplayable as you guys can see, it's, uh, it's a slow motion mess. Same game on the Intel system runs at a similar 16 FPS but with a higher TDP of around 30 watts. Still very unplayable. So both of these mini PCs will struggle with high intensive games like Skate 3 for the PS3. If you try to emulate systems lower like PS2, GameCube, Dreamcast, they will all emulate absolutely fine. So there you have it guys, the Geekom Mini IT11 versus the Intel Nook 11. It looks like these two mini PCs are identical in overall design, connectivity and performance. They both are pretty capable systems and can handle everyday tasks quite easily like office applications, your coursework, your entertainment, movie streaming, web browsing, your shopping, it can do it all. And you can also play some AAA PC games on this and you already should have a good idea of what this can handle in terms of gaming. If you were thinking of buying the Intel Nook 11, the Geekom is basically basically identical but $300 cheaper. If I had to choose one of these, I'm definitely picking the Geekom. Now I am quite surprised to see the same branded RAM and storage in both units. So not sure what you get in the Intel machine for the extra 300. I guess you're just paying extra for the brand name. I hope you found this one useful. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.